Hello, right, I just wanted to show you this. It's a load of fanning around with a camera and because of room and stuff and all the rest of it, to do this, I'm going to be constantly in the camera's way. And I tried to do a down shot, but it's not going to work. So I'll just show you the setup. So what I've got is you have these holes. And I have the pins in the holes. There's a H beam, an I beam, sorry, that goes in here. What I've got is I've got these two lengths of aluminium and then I've got this with two basically fucking standoffs with threads in. Just these sit in there like that. It's a bit wobbly. Well, it's not a bit wobbly. It's sat on the welds, but it doesn't really matter. That basically just gives me a base. I stick some cardboard on top of that. I stick the casings on top of that. No, I don't stick, sorry. I've got a board of wood that goes on top of there. So a bigger board. And then I basically, I one day, I want to make a table for it. That's easy to, like, you can do this. You just slot it up. Which is kind of what this is. It's the beginnings of. And basically, I just get the cases, stick the bearings in there, pump it down. I want to build, I want to turn the, I don't even know if I'm going to turn this into one. I'd like a hydraulic one where you push a button. Well, it's not so much the laziness side of things, it's literally just so it's quicker instead of pumping away and trying to hold everything as it wobbles around. This also needs bolt into the floor. The reason why it's here is because I'm moving. I'm moving shit around all the time. So this isn't going to be its final resting place. I want to make a little setup for this. The other thing as well is it's not high enough. So this whole thing is five foot five foot high where I'd much rather it be six seven foot high um, because I can get away with about six and a half foot in here something like that nearly seven uh, and if it goes on the back wall or that back wall I can get easily seven eight foot out of it so to do that I'd have to put legs on it which means extending these nah, 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 which is not hard to do it's just again something I need to get around to doing um, you know I could easily get some eye beams and just bolt through to it to extend it but basically I want it here this level and it's a foot lower than that it's a pain in the dick I could also buy another one or build one from scratch which is another you know bastardize some of this this eye beam thing across the top where well, it's a split eye beam it's quite good this bit I could use parts of it and make a better one make just this frame which is probably what I'll end up doing, making one of these frames. Um, we, I've got some some really chunky C channel at work I could use possibly, or something, invert it and blah blah blah. Make it big. Yeah, actually, <laughs> any road. I just wanted to show you the setup because it's a lot of fucking around with the camera and all the rest of it. I know it's excuses. One day it'll be beautiful, so you can all see and you can just watch me do it. But this is. The stuff's over there, I'm coming off rear, pressing it in, going back, forward, back, forwards, back, forwards. And yeah, there you go. So when bearings magically appear, this is where they're appearing from. <laughs> if that makes sense. Right then, put that to one side. I've got a lot to show and tell. So this, asse this assembly video is going to, well videos, are going to be really long winded. Right? Because, why not? Let's take the advantage. Let's take the thing and the thing and the thing so all the bearings are in um i just wanted to show some of the drifts so this is one right so that's a massive big slug of steel that sits on the daddy or the big one presses that in uh for the other ones for small ones there's this one you know for the fucking smaller ones to fit in there and just apply an equal load now now you can um, you can heat up the cases, hope they'll slip in, liquid nitrogen your bearings, fuck knows why you'd want to go to such extremes. Um, you know, if you're a garage, then fair enough, right? That is a bit of shite. If you're a garage, then fair enough. Um, doing it at home, pff, I don't know who does that, I don't know who's got time for that. Um... So all the bearings are in. So basically we are doing exactly the opposite of what I did as disassembly. Case has been painted. Now what we've got to do 
is oh, where that pick up that shit it's probably off that fucking bit of cardboard um so they're all pressed in let's quickly talk about bearings and inserting them and so on so what you can do is you see a lot of people get sockets and stuff so just say you want to get this socket and you want to stick it on well, this won't fit in i've just got a socket out of the fucking drawer and this other one so you might go oh look i've got a backhoe socket and i sexy a backhoe socket a 27 and a 30 millimeter Ah, beautiful. But, uh, Master Zoom. Right, let's see if we can do this. This is a dirty bum all of a socket. Right, you see that? And all that shit. When you go whack, it's going to come off that. It's going to go straight into your fucking bearing. So make sure uh, that you clean them to a, a, a certain degree. That's just what I did. I cleaned this one out. But you get what I mean, right? Is that it's something that people might not think of? Ask me how I know. Because <laughs> um, I go around and check all the bearings. And I remember doing this donkey, 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 donkey years ago. It wasn't for engine cases. It was for something else. Uh, it was a transmission, actually. But uh, put them in. Tap them in. Because they're only small. Well, they weren't small. They were large diameter. Tap, 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 tap. No, not large diameter. I forgot. Just forget what I'm saying. Tap, tap, tap with the socket. And they went crunchy. And I was like, Why? And Jeff, the guy, came over and went, these are crunchy. And I goes, I know, I don't know what the fuck's happened. He goes, you were wearing gloves, you were doing this. I said, yeah. He says, what did you tap it in with? I said, a socket. He went, ah. <laughs> then he showed me and then said, ask me how I know. <laughs> so, you know, shit rolls downhill. So we, we gain experience and knowledge from whatever. You can't see. I'll show you a picture probably. But I've put all of the bearing numbers, because some of these are blind. This one's blind. And blind means, well, blind is like this, Ugh. where it, there's no hole on the other side, right? There's nothing here on the other side. You can't, oh, fuck, oh, God. <laughs> you can't, good thing has a little tap. You can't see. This is the problem with cameras, you see. I won't be doing this if it wasn't for the what is it. That looks like dirt in there. It's just oil. These are just imperfections of the castings. I won't be doing a video soon one day of castings. Um ejection pins that's what all these marks are all that kind of shite but um the bearing sits in there and it's blind right there's no way through so it's very hard to see if it's seated for instance if we look at this bearing up here right on this side you can very clearly see if i must zoom this is so hard with like five things juggling in the air come on camera focus on the main thing in the middle there we go. You can see that these are these lips there and there. And I can see it's pressed up right against them. So some things it's easy to see if it's seating properly. Other things it's nigh on impossible to see what's going on. You just got to go off by sound. Now I pressed all these in and I thought about this. I thought fuck I should have left one out just to hammer in. You can tell there's a sound. It's like it's just a thud 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 and then you hear a ring right, I know loads of people say it I just love to give you an excellent demo of it regardless all the bearing numbers are on the outside what I mean by outside is not facing the outside of the engine or anything it means that if you've got a blind pocket don't put the numbers facing into the blind pocket and I'll ever see them on the outside it's just courtesy it's just a good thing to do some of these bearings I need to point that out as well some of these bearings so I these two this one and this one so this is for the input and output shafts for the gearbox on this side so this is the magneto side the left hand casing are shielded these bearings are shielded that one and that one and make sure the shields got on the outside they're the only two in this engine that are shielded like that uh, there are two bearings or three bearings that are the same size this bearing here so the in the shielded one this bearing here and the opposing bearing that have uh, this is for the, the the shaft so this shaft here you'll notice this one's a larger diameter that one's a smaller diameter and this is in between so then this has got to fit in there fit all the way through and then catch on there like that so it's got a diameter that this bearing takes but that's a smaller diameter oh fuck's sake this end of the shaft is a smaller diameter for the other side so make sure that you get them in the right way. Uh, make sure, yeah, make sure you get them 
that you get the, the this one's also thinner which actually helps you in this in this sense this one is half the half the thickness of this one so the thick one goes in that end the thin one goes in this end who would have thunk it eh? um it might seem easy because when i was cleaning the bearings it was piss i was just like massive one next one next size down then it came to that one is easy this one this one and this one are all the same diameters luckily all three have different internal uh, ids so internal diameters all three have different ones if they're all the same then it'd just be the one that's the th different thickness which would make a difference now what we need to do is i'm going to go around and most of these bearings have retainers so these retaining clamps look like this little lugs like that some are just flat stamp pieces of steel other ones like this one has a really rough <laughs> don't fucking know who did that i love this i love dropping stuff it's absolutely fucking amazing it makes it so much more exciting and again, there'll always be some knobhead in the comments who goes, Oh, fuck no, you call yourself professional dropping shit all over the place. I'm showing it to the camera. In real life, I wouldn't be doing this. People need to give it a go, right? You need to give a go doing what you'd normally do in front of a camera. It's not fucking easy. Any road. Yes, I could fucking set them up on the table, but there we go, right? So there's them ones. And I'm literally going to look at the drawing and see which ones are which. But then you get these daddies. This one's just been soaking in the in the, the dog treat tub. The dog treat tub of truth. And you get these big fuckers like this. Like these big ones. Now, it is incredibly imperative that you get these right. Two tabs might look the same. However, they might they might fit in different places. And why it matters is thickness. So, if I get my, oh, I had them, and I was measuring something else. This is what happens when you sat here doing something, and the missus, there they are. Oh, look in there we go, and the missus comes in, for fuck's sake, any road. That's it, blame your other half, Matt, she's not here to defend herself. This one, I know this is obvious which one this one is. This is 1.62, 1.6. This one is two and this one is two but this has got the big fucking countersink in it uh where's the other ones there's another one and it's this is the problem there's another one and it's thinner but it looks the same and it's like oh you fucks you fucks which one's this one this one this one is 2.7, right? This little fucker, to me, looks identical to that one, but it's thicker. Motherfuckers, right? So what I'm just saying is, is you've got to be careful which one's which. Some of these, oh, for fuck's sake. Some of these, this one looks identical as well. This is another thing I need to point out. I'm not going to do this on camera. I don't think I want to do this on camera. These need to be all... The fasteners need to be all dried out. And after you give them a bit of a clean or whatever. The fasteners need to be clean um, and free of oil. And dipped in a bit of acetone or something will evaporate really quickly. Because we need lock tightening. And you don't really want anything like WD-40 or anything fucking around with it. So some of them... Uh, oh, let's see. That's just... Oh, some of them are GIS, um, just ones like this, right? You know, round-headed ones like that. Some of them are countersunk fuckers. Now, I know it's obvious which ones are countersunk, these ones, because... Oh, fucking hell, there we go. These ones, because the countersink just fits in there lovely. But you can see why it's important, because you start to get clearance issues and you put your bike back together and you don't know because you weren't paying attention in secondary school 
Rat tat 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 but what it's going to do is it's going to make this so thin, and with a thrusting or something of a bearing, it could actually pop off. And a lot of these retainers are to stop the bearings. They haven't got any kind of shoulder, these retainers. These clamps here are literally to stop the bearing thrusting out. And if this head pops off, and it just levers out a bit, or whatever, or something can go wrong, and it's rap tap 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 until it wears this down to nothing, you're like, oh, maybe it was just something knocking a bit. The noise has gone away now. <laughs> And then you give it the full fucking beans, and then a, a shaft slides, gears lock up, fucking something, because your input shaft can now move, right? Or something, your output shaft moves, moves in a bit. Something else claps something, and then all of a sudden it's catastrophic fuck all. And what was it over? It was over sticking the wrong fastener in the wrong fucking hole. It is severely important. Um, the other thing I didn't mention yesterday is uh, compressed air or you got one of these this one's run out i'll grab another one when i come to do all these bits and pieces um yeah uh we have to put the jets in so these oil the squirter jets jobbies these things here they for fuck's sake so these things, they have a little hole in the end, they come off the main pressure feed there. Make sure that when you've got these, they've got a tiny little o-ring on the bottom. Right, I left it in place, fuck it, I'm not touching it. Um, make sure that these do squirt through, right, that the shit and crud and oil and stuff comes out. Make sure they're not blocked, because if they're blocked, bad things happen. <laughs> Real bad things happen. Um, and make sure when they go in, because there's two, you see, make sure... <laughs> I'll get both, actually. Make sure that they are facing the right way, right? So these are, there's two of them. I'm just going to check if they're identical. If they're identical, which I'm sure they will be, but you never know. Yes, I'm just looking, matching them up, and they are identical, right? They're, they're, they're both facing the same way. So when you put that in, like so, and you put the other one in, yeah, they both face opposite ways, so they're both crisscross, oh, fucking like that, each other, like that, into different balls, obviously. This one to this one, this one into that one. But these are identical, thank God, damn it. These need lock tightening. Um, I'm going to chase out the threads, the tap, just literally loosely by hand, stick a tap in, chase it down to the bottom, back out, blow it out, new bit of Loctite, bang in. The other thing I've got as well, where is that pressure release valve? So we've got this pressure release valve, I take off the old o-ring, put a new one on, and I'll show you these, because not many people have seen these. These are O-ring spreaders. Check that thing out. So these will just... They're not for taking O-rings off. Look and grip that long. Oh, wonderful. These are O-ring spreaders, so you can just basically spread an O-ring, put it on there like that, and slide the O-ring into your hole. So people might not have seen these. They're, they're wankers tools. So they're for cunts like me. <laughs> you don't need them. You know what I mean? But um, they're, they're there. They're there, they exist, uh, if you've never seen them before. So, what do I need to do now? Everything's bone dry. Um, that's the good point. Right, so... Everything's bone dry. There's some blind bearings. So this one and this one. I've got some Permatech Ultra Slick Engine Assembly Lube. Right. I've got this, is a new, newish bottle. And then all I'm going to do... Oh, fuck me, you can't see anything, can you? 
Get it right, Matt. Jesus Christ. As a cameraman, I should be fired. Right then, there we go. So, you just weren't pointing the right way whatsoever. Actually, no, let's get you an even better view. Let's get you an even better view. My battery's running out. Fucking great. Oh, I've also got this. This is actually a hammer from... It's, that's a bit of tubular steel, fuck me. This is actually from a laminate flooring kit. Um, you get the wedges and all that shit. I only wanted the wedges and that tool that manages, gets you to pull the last one in. Um, but this is uh, hard plastic edges and a soft plastic edges. Um, so it's, we're going to call it the Dell Hammer. And that, this is good. You want to put dowels in, tap, tap, tap. You want to go a bit softer, tap, tap, tap. It just means you're not going to really fuck anything. Because some of these things, um, the selector fork dowels kind of thing, they, sometimes they need to tap in. You get it right, you tap, 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 and tap. And they just go in. So the hard plastic edges is for giving it the final crack, or if you want to give it the softy, softy a bit. It's a, it's a little nifty thing, right? It's a fucking shit hammer. I have got, as well doing shit like this and um, this so uh, brass end you can see it's been well used and this is just a plastic end right it's got a bit of lead shot in it it's a dead blow jobby little baby one for tappy 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 and obviously the old nylon for something and then these have got if you ever want if you ever seen them before you get yellow ones and all sorts but they've got replaceable heads uh, once you fuck them, which, as you can see, I have. <laughs> oh, and the other thing is, as well, is even when you're giving stuff a whack, right? If you want to use this, just give it, just give it a fucking sticker. I, I hate the fact that the stickers it really does annoy me. Just give it a wipe down because I just saw something fly off then. You don't want shit flying off. But it's alright, once I assemble all these. I should turn them upside down, give them a shake and see if anything falls out. But uh, you're always going to get bits of crap and something. That's what oil filters are for. Any road, what I do is just do that, right? Just go around once. Ugh. I don't know if you can, well, you can see. Just give it the roundy roundy. Like that, that's it. Some of these aren't blind, so it'll just fall all the way through, but fuck it, be right. Just like that. And then you just go around all of them. Just doing this, because it's fun. Why not? Left-handed. Just, I'm not really squeezing it, I'm just getting a bit out. It is really thick, is this shit. It must have loads of like golden syrup in it or something. Oh, and this, these large diameter selector shaft, the selector shaft, selector drum bearings. I don't know what it is, but they always seem to fall out. They must be just not a tight whatever for them, but I don't know why you do that on purpose. Oh, well, I'll get on. Fuck that, fuck that one. It is a tight space to get into. Yeah, and then that's it. This stuff's fucking horrible. Um, but yeah, you know, assembly lube it. Just a bit, just to sit in the bearings. And now when you give them a turn, they're not rattly. Because when they're dry and no oil in them, they're rattly. And i just give them a little disco spin. A little disco spin. Fucking hell, that's so sticky, it didn't want to fucking move. Jesus. A little disco spin. A little disco spin. A little disco spin. Sounds a bit crunchy, that one, doesn't it? Oh, it's gone. It's alright. It, it's pulverised into nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. That's... Oh, fuck's sake. That's the end of that. So yeah, like I say, you'll end up, usually for an engine, 
For an engine, I'll probably go through one of these, one of these little small ones. How much is this? This is four fluid ounces, 118 mil. About a half to one full one. It depends how many bearings, it depends how many bits and pieces, depends how many cylinders, depends the camshaft usually take that shit up like it's going out of fashion. Which brings me on to the next thing. I've got some of this, um, which someone recommended a long time ago, which is silicon sealant removal remover. I haven't tried it. So I didn't want to do it for this engine yet. We'll literally do some experimentations with old silicon on old parts because I've got a, an engine project coming up real soon. I say real soon. In the next couple of months. Um, and that'll have silicon fucking probably all over it. So we get to do that. I've got some silicon here. So here's... Oh, God. Yeah, that's... That's, that's gone off. I think that's all gone off. But I want the key from it. Because I do love the keys. If you haven't seen one of these keys before, you need to get out more. These keys are fucking awesome. Which they don't a lot of the time sell anymore. You don't get them for free. These keys. Right. Um, so the Loctite, I think, has died. It had a lid on, then the lid died. So see you later, Loctite. Um, what's this one? This is one I bought for this. Just in case my silicon's fucked, which it is. Uh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, we'll try that stuff. But I've also got the old Castrol out. And it's a shame I'm not sponsored by Castrol because I've got enough of the fucking stuff. High temperature grease. Extremely high temperature for wheel bearings, chassis, wheel bearings, blah, 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 blah. That's what it literally says wheel bearings on it. This was the Spherol EPL. That's magic stuff. And then we've got some Molly. Fortified with malignum. For CV joints and other sliding reciprocating movements applications where high solid content is required. And when you do a lot of assembly, you can use assembly lube for just fucking around with stuff. But when you do camshafts and other direct, so on the sprockets, so we've got this shaft, where the shaft's gone on here, we've got the sprocket drives for the cam chains. I put 50 50. So the manuals tell you to do this. You get 50% of this, 50% of enjoy. You get a little cup or something. Pour 50% and then mix it up, and I'll show that. I'm just showing you that I've got that already. Because this is what it's all about, right? It's all about getting ready to do the job. And then once you've got everything you need, so the Molly isn't absolutely required. If you use new cams and stuff, a lot of times they give you a, a sachet of the shit anyway. And I just go clean, straight up Molly grease when I do that. This stuff will dissolve in oil. In other words, it'll dissolve is a shitty word. It just mixes in with the oil and it's fine. Um, and the other thing is Vaseline, which I know where it is. Uh, Isaac's got it, but uh, the Vaseline will go through that as well. Well, uh, Vaseline or Permatex and Molly Grease, which is usually where I go out, and I'll explain what that's all about. So, got gaskets. I think I showed them, yeah, we've got gaskets. Got all the bearings in. Um, so what we need to do now is plug in the jets, put all the tabs in, we need to put the selector forks in, the selector fork rods. We need to put the, uh, where is it? The selector drum. So this, this just needs a little bit of a wipe down, but we need to put the selector drum in. Make sure we don't lose that pin. It's not going to come out, is it? Good. Oh, it's the other side. That's it. Um, put the selector drum in. Get our gearbox out of its box. Our sexy gearbox with its new gears. New gears. Slide that in. Put the shaft in, this shaft in, put that in. Um, put the... Where's it gone? Oh, it's not on this side, is it? Uh, put the O-ring in. Can't forget that O-ring. There's an O-ring there. The jets and stuff we don't need to put in yet, because we can do that outside. Oil pump. The oil pump's there. We need to have a quick look at that. Put the oil pump on. Bolt that down. And again, more of these retaining tabs. Uh, dowel. Dowel. There's two dowels, I think, in this, and that's it. Is that correct? One there. One there. Yeah, there's only two dowels in these cases. Thank fuck for that. Um, dowel, 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 dowels. And then, like I said, another jet in there. Pump. Select shafts. Drum. 
gearbox. Oh, and the crank, obviously. <laughs> the crank. So, the other thing is as well is that there's these... I, just, I was about to stop and then I remembered. There's these surfaces here and here. Right, they're your thrusting surfaces. This one is biased, actually. It's got basically oil passageways because obviously that's where a lot of oil goes and gets squished out. There'll be some bias in the cross drillings or something. And that rides against this surface on the crank. And you need to... There might even be a helical gear somewhere. I'm trying to think where it might be. I can't remember what the crank one is. Are the, no, the clutch one is straight cut. Usually if there's a helical gear, you'll get a bias of force one way or the other. But anyway, you've got your permatex goo and your fucking slaver all over there. Well, we'll get to that when we get to that bit. Um, and then obviously it's putting the goo on. So what we need to do is just do all of the things that we need to do before you get the cases uh, stripped out. So just go around, make sure all these surfaces are nick-free. Go around with your finger. If there's any burrs. If anything's dug in, it will raise two little... Crater sides, crater walls, and then you'll have to basically take them off. So you go around giving it the finger. Oh yeah, like that. You'll get the little perm you'll get the little silicon sealant shit stuck in some of these, like the mouth to the thread. You'll get bits of silicon seal don't spend your entire life trying to dig those out. Right, fuck it, life's too short, right? This is a 50,000 mile year old engine. It's not a Formula One engine. It'll be completely fine with that stuff buried in there. You're about to cover it in goo anyway, so who gives a fuck, really? Um, yeah, so... Let's stop the yapping. And let's get cracking. Dripping every time. Every time. Right. Different day again. Do not know where I am in the video series. Who cares? Who really actually does care? <laughs> I've got a clue. Just life problems, issues, things, just stuff to do. Never get away from the boss. Um, what are we doing? Oh yes, right. So, what we're going to do is we put the goo in all the gooey holes uh, which is where you really want to put gooey holes uh, goo, sorry and then we were going to fit so, the other thing I can mention as well is obviously we're going to need a set of GIS screwdrivers to get these um, puppies in and squirters oh yes, I did say that you got to make sure using compressed air or what is the compressed air using compressed air or whatever it's good if you can find something that fits in the fucking hole like that you see you just squirted all that shit out of me. but I know that that jet is clean because there we go, great um, there's nothing in there because we don't want any nasties in there. Put them on there, like so. And then we need the fitting for it. Which is one of these puppies. One of these bad boy screw things. We go plonking in there. It's one of the bigger boys. I'm trying to make sure it is that one actually. Yeah, it, it goes all the way, it goes all the way through. It doesn't protrude. Just making sure I've got a few of these arrangements right. So the next thing we need, I need some Loctite and uh, I'm using six three oh eight. And uh, can we do this? Nostro zoom. We need some kind of solid background. There we go. Like the old Dell knob. That's it. Maybe a tiny bit more. Nothing, really. But nothing. Nothing crazy. Um, yeah, nothing mad. We don't need any madness in there. And then just in. No, you can't see that. And just in. Right then. 
just in and wind in like that and just give it a good fucking squeeze right that's fine the loctite's going to do the rest of it um may as well mosey on over oh this is getting itself all fucking tied up here the camera i mean um like so same fucking thing right check our jets same i'm sure i did this before but yeah. I can feel it blowing my hand in the right direction. That's the only bit I really care about. Put that in there like so. Get one of the screws. Mm, with ones with silver heads and ones with green heads. And for some reason, I want the green headed ones. They're the same length and everything. I'm not bothered really. Uh, and just clean the threads of any crap that may be in there. Um, yeah. As you can see, this is going to be very, very boring. I'll tell you what, to mix it up a bit, I'm just fucking putting a lot tight on this fucking thing. just speed everything up or no I'm not going to go through every single fitting oh, there we go I'm not going to go through every single fitting of every single nut and bolt I'm going to try and mix it up so I'll do uh, show you a few of them and next we've got our oil pump now I took this plate off to check this oil pump. And it started to do this weird sticky thing. And I think that is because it's dry. So I'm going to tighten this down. Not to within an inch of its life, just tight. Then it goes solid. So I was like, well, what have I done wrong? It might be the fact, yeah. So what's happening is it's just, it's tightening one end, it's just popping up a bit, and you just push it down, and it's fine. So no real mystery. No need to shit ourselves, <laughs> which is what I was doing. Right, so there's several things you can do with this. Right, um, you can. There's a lot of guys who actually fill these with Vaseline, and there's really nothing wrong with doing that. Um, it just it's petroleum based. It just dissolves in the oil, same as most of this shit does. What I like to do is you get your goo. Right. Pour it in that lobe. Pour it in that lobe. Like so. Because this is like a bucket, is this? Right, there's no it doesn't come out the, the back. But obviously when we put it in the engine it's gonna be upside down. It's gonna wanna all tip out. So you give it a few turns, and my God, that's difficult to pump, weirdly enough. Funny that, isn't it? And what I do is put a bit more in, and just fill the cavity. This is why I end up going through it, because I know someone's going to think, you go through a bottle of this shit in one, t in one engine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, So, build that up like that. Then what I do... Let's get the molly grease out because the molly grease is thick as shit and it looks like this then just in a sense close the door so to speak 
on the pump like that All right get a bit more like that it makes your hands minging hence the glue and then with another glove with a, another lovely glove this is actually a second hand glove the best that money can buy just wipe off this shit and just try and make sure it covers the holes the reason why is one of these holes is an intake and one of them's uh, an output I don't want to get all this grease in a sense trapped between the surfaces put a bit on the shaft that's all good but that grease is harder to move so when I flip it upside down all the oil doesn't instantly go fucking pissing out so how do these fucking go now? It's it's a that way. So when I turn it upside down, if you can see that, no, you can't see that. When I turn it upside down, all the oil doesn't come out. You put that on there like that. Give this a turn because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get all that grease to squidge out a bit between the two surfaces. And then you bolt the fucker back in. And I don't know, I want to go and check. It is the right length. I want to go and check what the manual says about Loctite. Because if I had to guess, it would be yes. Um, but we'll check. Give me a second. Nine, 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 nine! Right then, so the manual says no. However. <laughs> However, there's a lot of room around here, and these can back out, so I'm going to deviate slightly. And the reason why, I will explain why, the reason why, and make sure you do it at the end of the thread, no point doing it up here because they're miles away. The reason why I'm going to deviate slightly is because these are GIS fittings, and I'm not talking them up. It let me give me a second. I can't receive from it. Does it even give you a talk? Uh, no, no, it doesn't even give you a talk for these fasteners. Not that I can find it. Doesn't. For fuck's sake. Not that it says. Because usually it says install these, and I have a box that says install these to so and so and so and so and so and so. You know what I mean? Um. I don't want these backing out. And the thing is, if these two back out, all your oil pressure fucks off. It's it's a calamity really quickly. So because the GIS because there probably is talk settings I will check. Um but because I'm just doing this, um, a bit of Loctite makes me just sleep better. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm not tightening these down, I'm just snugging them ever so slightly. Or just hitting them until they hit the bottom. Like that. And then half a turn. I'll do that one actually. Half a turn. That actually bottoms them out. Ugh, there we go, you fucker. It's as tight as that'll go on. Oh, Jesus. Right, before I do anything, I want to lift this up. No, I'm just making sure it turns. <laughs> because <laughs> obviously that's moved my sludge around but it's all right now because it's in the system it, it can work its way down here eventually one day well fucking good <laughs> um 
Yeah, you see it squidged out a bit of the molly. Like that. Can you fill it completely with molly? You could do. Um, but I think that's quite a large quantity of grease. Instead, I put a lot of oil in there. It's thick oil, but I put a lot of oil in there. And uh, when you mix that, when you mix this assembly shit with the oil, it'll be fine. It's an oil. It's just a thick oil. Um, right. So there, they're done. Check. Right. Bearing retainers. <laughs> 